Hello and welcome to NOV Live. I'm Michael Gaines, host of the podcast NOV Today, and glad you are with us today as we jump into another technical conversation, uh, talking with a special guest and really diving in and taking your questions as well as we talk about technology, uh, innovations, and uh, talk to some of the people helping uh, drive the innovations in the energy space. So glad you're joining us today and look forward to another great conversation. Uh, before we uh, jump into our conversation today, as always, I'd like to bring in uh, Shelby Dumain, who is going to talk to us uh, actually about how you can be a part of the conversation today and some uh, new ways that you can uh, get your questions in uh, if you have them. So, hey, Shelby, thanks for being here. Hey, Michael. Uh, glad to be here as always. I love doing the show. Uh, so there's a couple ways you can submit your questions. If you have a question for Michael or for our guests at any point throughout the show today, you can actually comment it below. Uh, we are live, just like always, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. I'm in the comments throughout the entire show on all three platforms, seeing what everyone's talking about. And at the end of the show, we're going to answer as many questions as we can uh, in, in our time. Uh, other than in the comment section, if you have a question after the show that you want to submit, maybe for next week, or um, you just had more questions that you wanted to ask our guest, uh, there's a couple ways you can reach out to us. The first way is by emailing us. If you want to shoot us a quick message, you can email socialmedia at nov.com. And uh, we check that every day to make sure that we're getting everybody's uh, questions answered. And then our, one of our newest ways of contacting us, and maybe my favorite, is our comment line. So you can call, our number is 346-223-4799. You can call that number. Uh, I love this option because you can stay totally anonymous or you can let us know your name and we can feature you on the show. Uh, but it's a great way um, to just leave us a voicemail and let us know what questions you have and, and we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Yeah, I actually got a, a call in uh, this morning, actually, right before the show. So yeah, definitely, if you want to uh, give us a call, if it's a lot easier than if maybe you're out and about or uh, you know away from your, your computer and maybe something kind of came up, uh, uh, you can definitely give us a call. And, and uh, as always, you, you can't say the number enough. So one more time for those, because I really love the phone call. I like to hear people's voice. <laughs> I mean, being in podcasting, I, I'm biased to, to audio. So uh, would love to, to hear you, but just just in case folks want to know one more time, Shelby, what's what's that number for him? Absolutely. You know, I wish I had a better singing voice. I'd sing it for you, too. But uh, <laughs> that number is three, four, six, two, two, three, four, seven, nine, nine. So let us know. Give us a call. Um, but talking about comments and everything now uh, brings me to, to maybe my favorite part of the show. It is the Rig Geek Post of the Week. Rig Geeks Post of the Week. All right, so if this is your first time joining us, or, or maybe if you've seen this show before, you know uh, that the Rig Geek segment is where I ask a question to you, the audience. Uh, it's usually kind of a fun piece of trivia, either about the day's topic or the industry in general. And uh, I want to hear your answers. You can comment them. And at the end of the show, we're going to reveal uh, what the answer to the trivia question is. So stay tuned to hear the answer. So this week, we have a photo as part of our question. All right. And the question for this, uh, you know, uh, before I before I reveal the question, I want to mention, you know, in our industry, I think there's a lot of uh, some funny names for things. I know when I first joined Oil & Gas, uh, you know, what is a doghouse? And <laughs> what are all these words that don't sound like highly uh, technical pieces of equipment? And so I, I love this question for that. So I want to know if you know the field name for this diverter plate. Uh, so can you let us know? We have a few options for you because I know, you know, in the wide world of, of field names and nicknames, what could it be? So the options are, is the divi diverter plate A, a fish fin, B, whale tail, C, dog paw, or D, lobster claw? All right, so which one of those options is the field name for that diverter plate? Sorry, that direction. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Uh, and stay tuned at the end of the show. We're going to get to that. So uh, with that, back to you, Michael. All right. Sounds good. I like I like those choices. Those are pretty good. So, uh, yeah. So thanks for joining us today. Uh, looking in the comments here, see folks uh, from all over. We've got uh, you join in from Monterrey, Mexico. Looks like uh, some folks joining us from Belgium, Scotland, Argentina. Uh, looks like we have some folks. Uh, Saudi Arabia is in the house. Uh, Brazil, uh, Dubai, Turkey. 
So it uh, looks like uh, Bolivia, uh, Brazil. So, wow, India. So we're really excited, uh, folks, even from Spain. So thanks uh, to you all for joining us. We're really excited that you're taking time out of your day to, to join us. So I uh, want to uh, thank you. And, and we're going to kind of jump in here. Uh, so today's topic, we're talking about uh, AFRS. And, and don't worry, we're going to dive into the acronyms. I might even give you a little little spoiler, uh, the Advanced Fluid Recovery System. So uh, if you're, you're really just on the edge of your seat. Uh, but to help us understand more about this and really what it all means, we're going to uh, bring in our special guest today, who's Jason Clark. He's the U.S. Leasing and Technical Sales Manager here at NOV. So Jason, thanks for joining us today. Good morning, Michael. Thanks you for having me. All right. So, uh, you know, so, the, you know, of course, the, the upside of, of having a show like this is we have people from all backgrounds, both uh, those that are experts and those that are that are new. And so for those that might not be as familiar, would love to maybe dive in and say, OK, so AFRS, I kind of gave a little spoiler alert for them. But can we talk a little bit about uh, wh what is that and, and help people kind of understand what we're talking about today? So in the space that I'm in, it's it's for the uh, waste management and solids control, and there's a difference between the two. So solids control is going to be the separation of solids from the liquid stream, so uh, drilling fluids, and then waste management is going to be the separation of liquid from the solid stream, so your um, your your drill cuttings. So between the two, there's never been really a true balance um, of you, your solids control. Uh, can be better and you're not seeing as much waste management or your waste management can be better and you're not seeing uh, the results you, you want on the solids control. So not until now with the, uh, with the AFRS um, have we been able to kind of get that, that clear balance. So for years we've wanted to, um, we've wanted to pat, put solids through a centrifuge. But when, when we think about it, we wanted to still adhere to good solids control ideology. So basically our recovered fluid would not be riddled with, with solids. So historically you've got a dryer or a grinder and they're gonna get you a dry solid, but what you get back is, is, is a recovered fluid that's just riddled with, with, with solids, whether it be fine or, or, or bigger. So the AFRS is a cuttings conveyance system that basically sits underneath your rig shakers um, and your it has a fluid that actually conveys the shakers and then a pump. Um, and it's a really cool pump if pumps can be really cool. Um, it's it actually, it's not only you see it in the drilling, um, drilling space, but we also, and where we found it is it's a, a pump that we sell to fishing hatcheries. So we're transferring, they're transferring live fish and shrimp from one pond to the next. So basically if you've got Nemo that's going into the pump and Nemo swimming out of the pump, it's definitely not going to tear up a cutting. So right. um, we pair that up with our 2172 centrifuge and end result that you're going to get is a, is a recovered fluid that's super, uh, super clean. You're not going to have to, to dilute it and, and it's going to bring down your cost because with all dilution, there's chemicals that are involved in there. So it's just cost. But then you're also going to have a dry cutting and the, the dry cuttings, um, there's, there's savings that our operators see there because um, it's, it's all in, in how much they're hauling off. Well, some areas they're actually using mix-off material. So this mix-off material can come as a, uh, a fibrous pellet or um, a, uh, a sawdust. And if you think about it, this is something that when you go to a, drill, uh, a drilling location before they start drilling and in these certain areas, they are they're these super sacks that are lined up all along. So they're, bring, they're, they're having to purchase this material. They're having to truck it in. And now you're going to go ahead and mix that off and, and it's actually going to, you're going to add it to your waste stream. So you're just almost doubling sometimes your, your, your waste stream. So again, where cost is involved, there's more trucks that are going to have to take that out. So using, uh, using a system like this, we're actually now able to, to take what we're getting from the well bore, mix off with that, send it out. So we're not increasing a waste stream and, 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 and uh, passing on a savings to, to over to the customer. Um, we have dryers that get it this dry, um, like I had mentioned with a, with a, uh, with a vortex or with a grinder, but with the vortex of what you basically, what it is, is it's almost like a salad spinner. So you, you're, you're spinning it, it's putting it up against a, a, a grate and it's just creating fines. So it's going to, it's going to create a recovered fluid that you're going to need more, uh, more dilution 
more chemicals, more cost. Mm -hmm. With this AFRS, um, as when I grew up, there was a amusement park that was close by the house, and there was a ride called the Gravitron. And you go into the Gravitron, you, everybody lines up against the wall, and they spin it and spin it and spin it, and you're you're sticking to the wall. The, and this is exactly how the AFRS works. It, it's it's it throws the uh, the solids to the wall, separates the fluid, and and brings uh, brings great results. So so for for those that are, uh, you know really aren't uh, you know maybe really uh, familiar with some of the the core concepts of of uh, solids control and, and, and waste management, can you talk about so I know you 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 talked about uh, you know the haul off and why uh, this particular approach is really beneficial. But for those that might not be familiar, can you talk why why is it really important to to have effective and efficient separation of of the fluid from from the solids or, or your cuttings? Why why is that an important consideration? Well, recovering that fluid, I mean, it's on the average probably about eighty five dollars um, a, a barrel, and and if you're not recovering it, it's just going away, and you're going to have to rebuild it. So there. You're you're trying to recover that cost and keep it, as opposed to sending it down to the uh, uh, to the disposals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some basic economics there that I mean it could be easily be overlooked, but with uh, looks like some considerations, especially with with something like uh, AFRS, can really help uh, reduce yeah the kind of that waste uh, or or really waste in terms of not being able to recover uh, some of that fluid. So uh, can you? Talk a little bit, and so that that helps me understand, you know, high level, kind of what are some of the considerations from a technical standpoint. But I, I know that there's also those that are in the uh, that are watching that kind of want to know a little bit more detail. So could we maybe dive in a little bit more? You know, how how does uh, AFR AFRS work, uh, kind of in more more detail, or to the degree which you can? can Absolutely. Talk about? Absolutely. So the system has two modes. There's an um, there's an active mode and a uh, bypass mode. So in the um, in the active mode, you have your cuttings that are coming off of your rig shaker, and there you see it on the uh, on the left-hand side. The rigs are dropping into from the rig shaker, and then you have a bypass mode. If for some reason we need to bypass it or, and not process it, you uh, you have the diverter plate or, or whale tail flipped over, and it's your cuttings are going into a, um, into a waste bin that's set in front of it. So once you get inside and you're in the active mode um, and you're looking inside of that trough, there's 14 jets. So as I said, fluid is, is actually transferring those cuttings down. Um, so there's 14 jets that are directing it, uh, directing it down, not breaking down the solid again. And um, there, there you see the, um, there you can see it. It's all, it's all automatic on the, mm -hmm. uh, on the whale tail. Um, so there's no, no cranking or anything like that. It's just a press of the button and you can flip it, mm. flip it mm. from a uh, bypass to uh, active mode. So, so one of the, the things that kind of comes to mind as I'm, I'm watching this, I mean, certainly I can tell that there's a lot of intentionality that's gone into the design. Um, I know that one of those considerations as well, uh, has been safety, right? We have moving parts, we have all kinds of considerations. Um, so for those that that uh, also kind of that was maybe one of the first things they thought of. Can you talk to to kind of what's what's our philosophy and thought been but, uh, that went into uh, kind of the safety aspect um, when looking at, at AFRS? Absolutely. So there's 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 a, a, a ton of environmental safety because we don't want spills. Right. So inside of the trough of the AFRS, there are uh, two ball floats. One ball float is, is lower in it. And what it does is it makes the. Um, it controls the pump. So as your fluid raises up in that um, in that trough, it's going to back your 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 pump down. So it's not adding to the uh, the fluid rate in there. If uh, as the fluid goes down, it's going to increase your your uh, your fluid rate to push those cuttings down. So we're constantly trying to keep a, a balance inside of there. Now, for some reason, uh, your shaker deck loses power, or there's a, a sweep that's not communicated to us that, that comes uh, comes over the uh, the flow line shakers. The there is a secondary float that's that's a little bit higher, and if that is engaged by the by the water, it's going to uh, I'm sorry, if it's engaged by the fluid, it's going to automatically flip the whale tail over and let it bypass, so that we don't create a spill um, a, a spill there. Uh, also, it's got some uh, on our recovery uh, recovery side where we uh, have a specialized effluent tank. So we, we keep the fluid in there if for some reason the, re the recovery is faster 
then there's an injection pump that's on there. And if that injection pump is, is overwhelmed and the fluid gets to a certain level, we also have a contingency pump that'll basically clear that to a manageable level and, um, and, and send that back to the rig and, and, and not allow for a spill as well. So if you're just joining us, we're talking with Jason Clark. He is the U.S. Leasing and Technical Sales Manager here at NOV uh, with Brant. And we're talking about uh, AFRS or Advanced Fluid Recovery System uh, from NOV. And uh, so if you have any questions uh, about the technology or anything that uh, comes up you know, during our conversation that you'd like uh, addressed during the Q&A portion, Feel free to put your comments there in uh, the chat box, whether you're watching us on LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube, and um, we'll be glad to try to get to your question uh, during today's show. So uh, Jason, let's talk now uh, about another aspect that certainly is, is a consideration when anytime you're talking about uh, a piece of equipment coming on, on site, and that would be the footprint. So we want to want to talk about that, and and what what does that look like when we're we're dealing with AFRS? So really small. The AFRS it's 32 inches wide. So in in where sizes of locations are getting smaller and smaller, that backyard is getting smaller and smaller for us. So it's it's only 32 inches. Um, which if we had a drying shaker system, you're going to look at uh, about eight feet that would sit there, and then you have a cuttings tank that sits in front of it. Um, this, this way you can actually push that, uh, push that cuttings tank a lot closer over to the rig. There's more, uh, area to, to drive around, whether it be on a, an excavator or, uh, a, a backhoe as well. Um, and then it's also, it's, it's adjustable. So if you have a rig that's taller, um, it, it, the AFRS actually sits inside of itself. So you can unpin the legs, raise it up and get it up to that, uh, up to their, their shaker slides and, um, and, and just pin it right back and, and be ready to go. Same thing with, a, with a, a shorter rig, be able to kind of bring it down to its base, to its skid and, and slide it right underneath there and, and, and be ready to go. Hmm. So one of the, the things that, you know, I know we talked about it at, at the, the top of our, our conversation yet, I, I still kind of want to go, go back to it is, is really, uh, honing in on on what what really sets AFRS apart, and and I'm kind of stealing a little bit of your thunder. I I, I think the answer is going to be drier cuttings, right? Yeah. Like really being able to do that. Uh, and sorry if sorry if that was like your punchline to to your response, but I'm <laughs> guessing here. So so no. yeah, dry, drier cuttings would be one. It, okay. it, it's again I come back to that balance. It's going to be drier uh, drier cuttings. You see you see right there. Um, five percent oil on, on solids is what we, we've gotten that down to. Mm. Um, that's some of some of our hallmarks. But it, you know, also it's going to be the recovered fluid and something that's that's not laden with with solids or laden with fines and and not creating something that we're giving back to the rig uh, to have to use a bunch of, of dilution and chemicals to bring it back to a usable level. Mm. Mm. So, um, so there's that really cool pump. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, and, and you can see through here that that cutting goes in. It doesn't see that impeller. It just gets caught up in the vortex and then shot shot straight out. I see. I see. So, so that's what you were talking about. That yeah. So that in in some industries that are that are using it for uh yeah like transferring live live fish or something. Why you can you can do that. So it's applicable there just as much as it is. Uh, you know, in the, the oil and gas space. That's absolutely that's really good. And, and, you know, I pin, uh, pinpoint good solids control ideology and, and using that because we're not breaking down the, 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 the drill cutting that comes from the well bore, that's adhering to it because it's, mm. it, it only breaks down once it gets thrown to the wall of, a, a, of one of our centrifuges. Talk about uh, products that AFRS works with and, and maybe specifically for those that, that might uh, be really familiar in the space. You know what what types of rigs can can AFRS uh, be be applied to? Any rig, any any land rig that that AFRS is going to slide right underneath and, and and do what it's it's supposed to do. In regards to um, equipment, we it's always paired up with our HS twenty one seventy two centrifuge. So that's our big boy. That's our our workhorse. It it can. Um, it can deal with the volumes that that it's going to uh, send to it. 
Um, it rated the 2172 in, in AFRS jobs, we rated for 32 tons an hour. So that's pretty, pretty fast drilling. Um, what I've seen and seen personally that we've done is eight and three quarter inch bid at about 600 foot per hour. Mm. So that's a lot of cuttings that are coming through it. And that, 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 that H2, uh, HS2172 rips, rips right through it. Mm. So here, really great picture of the AFRS, the, the effluent tank that, that is paired up with it as well. So that's it in, in uh, bypass mode. What you can see below on that, um, on that picture is it also has some spill trays. So if there is um, that it's built into its own spill tray. So for any reason, if there's anything that kind of drips out of there, it's caught and not, uh, not going to fall onto mm -hmm. the ground and make an environmental issue. So I know I've been a little bit uh, selfish in our conversation and that I've, I've gotten the front row seat to, to ask you questions, but uh, I've been looking over in the sidebar and I've seen that there have been several uh, uh, comments and some really good questions that have been coming in. Uh, and again, from, from folks all over. So I'm going to uh, be selfless and not selfish here. And uh, let's go ahead and bring in Shelby Dumain to see if we can get some uh, mm -hmm. rapid fire questions. Looks like uh, the comments are really, really starting to fly over there. Uh -oh. Absolutely. Yeah. We're getting some really great questions. And uh, this first one was asked a couple of times. Could you talk a little bit about um, the pump inlet and outlet capacity? So capacity wise and what I, you know, it's going to be, it's a, uh, it's a six inch that, that we, we swedge it down um, and then get swedged down further to go to the 2172 at a three inch, uh, at a three inch hose. Uh, again, rated for, for 32 tons, uh, 32 tons an hour. So um, definitely a workhorse. Mm -hmm. Great. And this next question comes from LinkedIn, uh, Kellen. He asked, what percentage decrease would you expect to see on ROC rate of change using the AFRS uh, versus just standard shakers? Probably at, at least 50% versus just, just standard flow line shakers. Now, what we are seeing is it, and, and have done a lot of testing uh, versus drying shakers is a 28% um, decrease on uh, oil on cuttings. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so yeah, like Michael said, we're rapid firing. So we got a lot of really great ones. This next one comes from Mark um, and he is asking, how do you protect the centrifuge conveyor from damage by large particles uh, such as cement plugs, et cetera? So Mark, great, great question. Um, that's something we have implemented about a, a there's a, a year change out policy. Um, not only do you have your conveyor in there, you've got other wearables that are, that are changed out um, on a, it's, it's all, looked at on a uh, per pad and per well basis. So we're, we're constantly monitor monitoring our, our wearables. And at the time that it needs to be pulled, we're gonna pull it and, and then put it through our OEM refurb. Mm -hmm. Excellent, so we'll do one more question before we head back to Michael. Uh, so this one comes from Scott, also on LinkedIn. And he was wondering, uh, could this system be used with casing milling procedures to separate swore from drilling fluids? Scott, that's a really good question, and that's probably one that I'll probably have to get back to you on. Um, we've never done it, and not to say that we can't do it, but we just haven't done it yet. But I, I'd definitely like to take that question and get back to you on it. Cool. Yeah, and that's actually a really good segue, unplanned, by the way, but a good segue for those that, that have uh, some really good questions on things either we have or haven't done and want to uh, get that over to you and the team, Jason, uh, for those that are watching, uh, if you have a question that you'd like to get over to Jason, uh, we'll put his email address on the screen, but it's uh, jason.clark at nov.com. And, and I, I don't want to speak for you, Jason, but I think you're open to, to any, any and all questions, those that you can answer on the spot and not, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love talking about the AFRS. Yeah. Great yeah. Piece of equipment. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm glad that, that you're here to talk about it. And uh, if if you uh, don't have the opportunity to send uh, an email, but do want to know more, you can head over to nov.com forward slash AFRS, where you can learn more about the product inclusive of getting in touch if you'd like to talk more either with Jason or other subject matter experts on this particular uh, topic. So uh, this has been really interesting. I've, I've learned a lot. I, I always learn a lot. Uh, when we have these conversations and certainly appreciate you uh, giving us some insight on uh, this, Jason. So thanks for, for joining us today. 
Hey, Michael, thank you. And I wanted to thank you. You, you provided us with a really great platform to be able to showcase these NOV technologies and you do a great job and I thank you for it. Well, thank you. It's, it's my pleasure. I uh, couldn't do it without the team and certainly uh, subject matter experts like you. So thanks for joining. Thank you. All right. So we're going to get back over to Shelby to get the answer in case you didn't hear it uh, during our conversation with Jason on what that, that the, uh, what is it? The name for the diverter plate, right? Yep. Yeah. I was just going to say, if you were listening closely, you might've heard, heard it slip there when Jason was talking. <laughs> um, but just to reiterate the question real quick before I reveal the answer. Uh, so we asked, what is the name of the, the field name of the diverter plate? And uh, we had some options here. We had fish fin, whale tail, dog paw, and lobster claw. Before you give the answer, I just want to say I like lobster claw only because I can I can hear a, a fisherman's voice in my head saying lobster claw all day. But but that's just mm -hmm. me. Yeah, and, and lobster claw makes me a little hungry too. So I think, <laughs> I, think I personally might like that one too. Yeah. Uh, I saw a lot of answers. A lot of people uh, answering all across the board. But the answer is a uh, drum roll. We got, it is whale tail. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely looking at the shape, I can see it there. Yeah. Uh, so that is that is the uh, field name for the diverter plate. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for that, Shelby. That was really fun. And uh, really appreciate you joining us. Again, just a real quick recap. Uh, if you want to watch, I saw a comment actually just come across a, a moment ago asking, you know, how do we watch uh, this again? And of course, uh, all of our conversations that we have here live are on NOV's YouTube, uh, Facebook, and LinkedIn profiles. So you can check those out. Uh, if you would like to get more information on the AFRS, again, you can send an email to Jason Clark at NOV.com. That's Jason.Clark at NOV.com. Uh, you can also go to NOV.com forward slash AFRS if you'd like to learn more. And uh, of course, we're always open to your questions, comments, or feedback on conversations like this. Uh, how can we make it better for you? Because ultimately, this is for, for you, the viewer. Or do you have any ideas for future topics that you'd like us to cover? If so, if so feel free to send us an email at socialmedia at NOV.com or you can share with us on a phone call. And that is area code or a country code plus one, three, four, six, two, two, three, four, seven, nine, nine. So I know a lot of information there, but certainly uh, look forward to joining you next time here on NOV Live. And for all of us here at NOV, thanks for watching and for listening. And we'll talk to you later.